Welcome to our lecture online. Another cornerstone of the theory of general relativity is gravitational waves. They were predicted by Einstein and first indirectly measured by the slowdown of two pulsars ro revolving, revolving or rotating about one another. But we had never actually measured or detected gravitational waves. Well, in 2015, we did for the very first time at the LIGO uh, establishment back in Washington and Louisiana State. So, what did they detect? Well, it turns out that at a location about 1.3 billion light years away from here, two black holes collided. How do we know that? Well, it turns out we felt the aftermath of that 1.3 billion years later, and we've been able to figure out what must have happened. So the two black holes in question, one had a solar had a mass of 36 times the mass of the sun, and the other one had a mass of 29 times the mass of the sun. So they approached one another, not directly. They began to revolve around one another. We started capturing the result of that because that very rapid revolving the two black holes around one another began to create a black, a gravitational waves that were that were actually able to detect. And so we captured it at the point when the frequency of, of rotation was 30 times per second. So the black holes were revolving around one another at 30 times per second. They spiraled inward to one another. 20 milliseconds later, they had increased their frequency to 250 times per second, and then they collided. That event was captured because that created gravitational waves that then traveled through the universe through a distance of 1.3 billion light years for 1.3 billion years until they finally reach Earth. And at that moment, in 2015, we detected the gravity waves passing by. Notice that the wavelengths of these waves are very long. If we take the speed of light divided by the frequency, you end up with some very long waves. So they're very large in length or in wavelength, but they're very, very tiny in amplitude. And that makes them so difficult to detect. So what we have here is we have the two uh, research centers of LIGO, one in Washington, one in Louisiana State. They detected the gravitational waves seven milliseconds apart, and that is the requirement. If they're not within 10 milliseconds, then they're not measuring the same event. A slight little earthquake, in the vicinity of one of them could set off the, the, uh, the experiment in such a way that we might think we're measuring gravitational waves, but the reason why we have both of them 3,000 kilometers apart is that they would detect the gravitational waves from some place in the universe at least or not more than 10 milliseconds apart. So in this case, what's 7 milliseconds apart, and it, then, it depends on the angle of approach relative to the location on the surface of the Earth where the two research centers are. The way these work is they have buildings that are four kilometers long at 90 degree angles. So there's two of those, one in Washington and one in Louisiana State. And they send laser beams from the corner into one direction and back. So they reflect off a mirror and they come back. Then they send them in the other direction and come back and they do that at the same time. And they make them go back and forth many, many times. The reason why they're at 90 degree angles is because at both ends of them there is a target that is able to capture the gravitational waves. It's a very heavy object that will swing along with the gravitational waves, thus changing the length of that path from here to here just ever so slightly. How slightly? Well, that's the incredible amount. The amplitude of the oscillations expected from these gravitational waves are in the order of about 1 1,000th the diameter of the nucleus of an atom. You start wondering, well, how can you measure those very tiny little fluctuations? Well, the way it's done is that when you send wavelengths back and forth, and in a descent, for example, it swings back just a little bit so that the distance is slightly longer. It takes a little bit longer than for the light to go back and forth. They make it do it many, many times thousands of times perhaps, and over the accumulation of traveling that extra distance each time they go this way and back and this way and back, the two light beams that go back and forth like this, eventually one of them gets slightly out of phase with the other one, just enough so that we can measure the difference. And once we can measure the difference, we then have established that we detected gravitational waves. Of course, that has to happen at the same time at both places, both in Washington and in Louisiana State, and that's exactly what happened. 
seven milliseconds apart. It's just unbelievable to think that we captured an event that happened 1.3 billion years ago, seven milliseconds apart at two locations about 2,000 or 3,000 kilometers apart, 2,000 miles or 3,000 kilometers apart. So that established for the first time the realization that we can capture these gravitational waves. They do exist. They travel through the universe all the time. The vast majority of them are undetectable, at least at this point, except when they occur because of some catastrophic event, when we have two fairly large, these are kind of like medium-sized black holes, when they collide, the event caused such a ruckus, so to speak, in the fabric of space that they caused the gravitational waves to exist large enough for us to be able to detect them. And so again, this is a direct result of the concept and the theory, the general theory of relativity. And so we again, once again, prove that we can measure all the various aspects that are really the outfall, the outcome of that theory actually existing. Again, what is the gravitational, or the, the, uh, what is the uh, theory of uh, relativity, the general theory of relativity? Well, it has to do with space itself. Space is not just a nothingness. Space is actually kind of like a fabric. And what happens is, when you put objects in that fabric, that fabric bends or warps in such a way that it causes gravity. And then we shake these things around. When you take a star or, or an exploding star, for example, it shakes the fabric of space around it that causes gravitational waves, which then ripple through the entire universe. And we can actually detect them. And that is the result of the theory of the general theory of relativity. So when they measure that, were they looking for it? Oh yes, they were, so these, these uh, two uh, research centers at both locations, they're constantly on the alert, so to speak, so they're constantly functioning and they start detecting slight vibrations. Quite often the vibrations are not due to gravitational waves, they could be because there's a slight little earthquake or a truck drove by nearby, although they are at very remote locations. But if they both detect the same kind of thing within 10 milliseconds of each other, then they know that they have gravitational waves. There's no way to predict it. There could be all kinds of gravitational waves coming our way right now. <laughs> and at some point, they'll just come right past us. Remember, they travel really fast. They travel at the speed of light. So at one second, they'll be at the moon. And one second later, they're at the Earth. And one second later, they're 300,000 kilometers away from us. So they just pass right by us. And we have to capture it at that very moment. And it's impossible to know that they're coming. So that is done right here. They get the waves going up and down in one direction. The, the, the waves are the light. So these are laser beams going back and forth in one direction, back and forth the other direction. They are coherent at the moment that they start. So they start out and they're coherent. But as they go back and forth, if one has to travel just slightly farther than the other, and they do that like a thousand times, that accumulates to the point where you begin to see an actual phase shift. Remember, each time they travel back and forth, the extra distance traveled would be two times uh, divided by a thousand the diameter of a nucleus. So it's so small that you initially can detect it, but if you do it a thousand times, that accumulates to the point where now you have enough of a phase shift that you can actually detect. And then that happens at two different places. And that happens exactly the same way at two different locations, 3,000 kilometers apart. Within 10 milliseconds of each other. <laughs> so we can have the, um, the two stars rotating around each other. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that, so as they're getting closer and closer, they're revolving around one another, they're faster and faster and faster. We started capturing the waves at the point when the frequency of rotation was about 30 seconds, 30 times per second. So they were going around one another about 30 times per second, and then they went faster and faster and faster. So in the short period of time of about 20 milliseconds, they went from a frequency of rotation of 30 times per, per second to 250 times per second. And then eventually they collided together. That's very fast. Thinking that how large these objects are, 36 times the mass of the sun and 29 times the mass of the sun, can you imagine two objects like that revolving around one another at 250 times per second? It, it is just an, an absolutely incredible event. And what's the distance apart? Uh, that is hard to determine. Um, it's, 
we're probably talking about when they get that close to 250 hertz, I'm just taking a wild guess because I haven't actually calculated it yet, but I'm thinking about probably in the order of tens of miles, hundreds of miles. So yeah, not, they're, they're extremely close together. And, and they're, so they're very closely approach each other as they're going around and then they collide. And how long does it take from that to actually collide? I would say that they're here within just a few milliseconds of actually colliding at this point. That was probably the last kind of signal that they got until they collided. That was measurable in that way. And then you said that pulse has sent out. How long does that pulse last? This pulse? Right here with the laser light? Because yeah, how long does, how long do they, what's the time frame that they are able to, to detect this? Let's just say everybody was out to lunch and they forgot to turn on the machine. <laughs> and then they come back to the shoe and turn it on. They missed it. They would have missed it. That's correct. If they went out to lunch and then turned on the machine, it, essentially this machine is on all the time, I, I tw 24 that. hours a day. Um, and once in a while they take it down for maintenance and things like that. And when people have to go inside and, and do things. Uh, but this is going on all the time. The event, remember, the, these waves travel 300,000 kilometers per second. So it's, it it's, it's a flash. It's, a, it's like a... It's like a very tiny fraction of a second. This whole event lasts a very small fraction of a second. So about 20 milliseconds from early detection to final detection to the collision. So the whole event lasted somewhere in the neighborhood of, who knows, 30, 40 milliseconds. Well, this 30, 40 milliseconds have been traveling for 1.3 billion years. 1.3 billion years to capture that very small fraction of a second of an event going through the universe. So when they go through You're absolutely correct. It's like a spherical wave going out. It's like a big balloon that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it passes by everything in the universe. So every galaxy, every star, every planet is affected by these waves as it goes out at the speed of light. And if there's other alien beings that have labs like this where they can detect gravitational waves, they would also detect them. Of course, if they're 100 million light years closer, they would have detected 100 million years ago, but yes. They don't know yet. That's right. And so that, you know, and it just goes to the universe. And yes, everybody eventually, if they uh, have the capability of measuring that, will eventually measure that anywhere in the universe. Yeah, that, I mean, that's to me the most incredible thing that this has been on its way for 1.3 billion years and that we can actually measure that very moment in time 1.3 billion years later. But that proves that gravitational waves exist.